Welcome to a new tutorial in which we will see how to process the sample pre-recorded videos of free mocap. This tutorial assumes that you already have the free mocap application installed. As you can see here it is running version 1.0.34. So let's start from here. To download the test videos, click here, data, and then download sample. Go to the recording sessions folder. It can take some time, depending on your connection. The test files consist of three synchronized videos. They are a recording of the same movement, and they have the same frame rate and amount of frames. Here, we can see a video. There is John. First running a calibration with the Cheruko board. And then he makes some test movements. Three cameras capturing from three different positions. There is also a calibration file. We can see its content. Here appear the three cameras, camera 0, 1 and 2. The reference position is camera 0. And the other cameras have their position according to camera 0. You can see the distortions and rotations. And an important info here, that we are going to use now, is the size of the square of the Cheruko board, which is 58 millimeters. It is the side of a square. Okay, first thing, we are going to delete this file, because we are going to start only with our three synchronized videos. In this example, the videos are directly placed inside a folder inside the recording sessions folder. We go to the main screen of free mocap and click load recording. Then browse to the synchronized videos folder where the videos are located. You won't see the videos, no problem. Then click Select Folder. The videos are imported and you can see a preview. Also, you can check the Directory View tab. And an important tab is the Active Recording Info tab. Here you can check the current status of the processing steps. Currently it only has true the synchronized videos recorded status. Now we go to the Process Data tab on the right panel. We are going to run a calibration from the active recording, as we have several cameras and we want a 3D capture. Here we enter the value of the length of the side of a square of the Cheruko board, and we press Run Calibration. You can check the status of the process on the bottom section, but, for more information, you can check the output of the terminal where you run free mocap from. Here you can see that the videos are being processed frame by frame, detecting boards in each of them. To have a successful calibration, there should be enough boards detected in each video, and also have several frames where contiguous cameras detect the board at the same time. Once the process is finished, a TOML file will be created inside the recording session capture folder. Now that we have the calibration file, we process the capture videos. In case the capture videos are different from the calibration videos, you have to load that different folder. Even if capture videos are the same, it's better to reload the folder. Now, on the process data panel, we load the calibration file. Before processing, let's check the options. First you have the 2D image trackers that manages the step where the videos get annotated with a skeleton using media pipe. An important option is the multi-processing. With this enabled, the videos will be processed in parallel. This is fast, but you could run into low RAM memory issues making free mocap freeze. In that case, it's better to disable this option. In this example, we will leave it enabled. It has some media pipe parameters, but the default options are fine. You can also manage the 3D triangulation options. And lastly, you can apply a Butterworth filter to smooth the movement of the markers. Now we click the Process Motion Capture Videos button. Once again, we go to the terminal to follow the processing. We can check how the videos are being media piped in parallel. There is a bar to check the progress. Once that step finishes, it will save to disk the annotated videos. Next, those annotated videos will be analyzed to get the 3D reconstruction. It also has a progress bar. 
once that step ends, a set of statistics will be calculated. One of those is the center of mass. With all the data analyzed, several output files are generated and placed in the recording folder. At the end, the Blender export is generated. This could fail for some reasons. Among these reasons are a wrong Blender executable path in the options, as well as not having the Rigify add-on enabled in Blender. Once the export is completed, the Blender file should be opened automatically. And here is the Blender output. Before checking the output, let's see where to enable the Rigify add-on. You go to Edit, Preferences, type Rig in the search box and the Rigify add-on will appear. Click the checkbox to enable it. Let's also take a look at the recording folder. In the annotated videos folder, you can check how accurate was the 2D skeleton detection. By seeing the videos, you can find out if there were some problems during the capture that affected the output. Some problems can be bad body background contrast, bad lighting, cameras not framing the whole body, bad video sync, blurry images, body parts occlusion, etc. In the folder, you can also find the statistics files with the raw data. Now going back to the Blender file. You can erase the default objects like the camera, light, and cube if you want. In this output, you get several useful elements. First one are the empty markers. These represent the location of the capture body joints. There is also a mesh showing the calculated center of mass. A group of meshes representing rigid bones and also a rig and mesh of Skelly that can be exported. One last thing to look at is the Active Recording Info tab that now shows all the processing statuses as true. That ends the tutorial. If you have any doubts or comments, feel free to join the free mocap Discord for further discussion.